Marianne Brooks's father has just passed away and while in the office of a lawyer or the person who presides over her family's financial matters, she finds out that her father has basically left her penniless. She doesn't even have the house to sell because her father neglected to tell her that it was actually rented. After funeral expenses, Mr. Rake tells her that she'll be left with $30. With few other options, Marianne decides to leave her home in Pennsylvania and move to New York to stay with her father's sisters, her aunts, Agnes and Ada. Agnes is not very happy about this. She predicted that her irresponsible brother Henry would do something like this and she's not thrilled about having to take Marion in but she agrees. At the train station on her journey a scuffle breaks out on the platform and in the ensuing chaos Marion's purse is stolen along with her money and her train ticket. A fellow passenger Peggy Scott feels sorry for her and offers to pay for Marion's journey. Of course this is still in the time when black people had to sit at the back of the trains and board last so Marion joins Peggy in the back. Meanwhile while back in New York, the Russells, a new wealthy family, have just moved into the city. Bertha Russell, her husband, and their two children live across the road from Agnes and Ada, who spy on mostly Bertha's arrival from behind the curtains. Mrs. Russell, or Bertha, is very socially ambitious, I guess. It matters very much to her that her family is seen, liked, and respected in high society, but she's finding it challenging to fit in at first. By the time Marion and Peggy arrive in New York, Peggy's unable to take a ferry to Brooklyn, which is where she's meant to be going, because of bad weather, so Marianne suggests taking her with her to her aunt's home. They allow her to stay, she eats with the maids, and for the most part it's fine, it only ruffles some minor feathers, but I suppose in the context of the show, in the time, it's expected that she would be treated more like the staff than a guest, I guess. The next day, the ferries are still not running, so Peggy has to stay another day, and she offers to assist Agnes with some writing tasks. Agnes agrees and eventually hires Peggy as a secretary on condition that she tell her parents where she is. Peggy is estranged from her father, who she refuses to see, but she does meet with her mother to tell her of her intention to work for Agnes. Her mother isn't happy about it, but she eventually gives Peggy some money, even though she would rather that Peggy just come home. Marion and Larry Russell, so the Russell's oldest son, eventually meet when her dog Pumpkin runs across the street and Larry saves her. It's obviously kind of a meet cute, there's something there. So in an attempt to properly introduce her family to society, Bertha sends invitations out for a soiree at her house. She expects around 200 guests, but the party is a flop, with only Marion sneaking out to make an appearance for a few minutes. She does bump into Larry there, and it's clear that it's still early days, but Larry definitely has eyes for her. Bertha chases away another guest who just showed up because Bertha knows that she's one of the people who just wants money for her charity. Bertha has the maids parcel up the food and send it to the church. One of Bertha's maids, by the way, Miss Turner, doesn't like her at all, and it looks like she has eyes for Mr. Russell. I don't know if anything is actually going on there, but I don't know, Mr. Russell didn't look completely disinterested, or he was just being friendly. We also find out this episode that Agnes's son Oscar is gay, or he has a male lover to be specific. While Agnes is rather conservative with her rules, she is reasonable, but even if she accepts this about him, I wonder what New York society would think because these things matter apparently. So I'm guessing that's going to be a storyline this season. Anyway, that was episode one of The Gilded Age. Will I carry on streaming this? Yes, a new period drama that's not as dreary as Downtown Abbey, but not as over the top as Bridgerton. Could be good. I mean, I'm not desperate for the next episode, uh, but yeah, I'll follow along, I guess, because this is a fairly low stakes show and I don't think I'm watching any period dramas at the moment, so I might add this onto my roster. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.